This conference will now be recorded. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Shomia Farid Tony. Welcome you all on my today's lecture class on cardiovascular system. Today I will discuss some topics of cardiovascular physiology. The content of these lectures are the functional part of the vessel, uh, functional classification of the vessel, relationship between pressure flow and resistance, and how heat and other dissolved substances are exchanged between blood and interstitial fluid, and control of tissue blood flow. Before going to the main topics, you have to know some basics. Circulation. Circulation is divided into systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation. Systemic circulation supplies blood to all parts of the body except lung. It is also called greater circulation or peripheral circulation. Pulmonary circulation supplies blood to the lung. It is also known as lesser circulation. This figure shows the basic organization of the cardiovascular system. I have, uh, you have uh, already known that blood from left side of the heart passes through aorta to different parts of the body. Artery, when um, carry blood from heart to the different organ, they branches into, they branches into a smaller artery. Then, um, a smaller artery, then after entering into the organ, smaller artery branches into arterioles. Then arterioles within the organ give rise to capillaries. Then capillaries you need to form venules. Then, uh, then, uh, 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 then, um, uh, jokhon hoche venules, you need to venules form kore. Jokhon venules, when venules leave organ, they rejoin to form a small vein. Then a small vein then return blood back to the heart. Back to the heart. Then um, uh, you have already known that uh, from the right side of the heart, blood passes through pulmonary artery into the pulmonary circulation and blood becomes oxygenated. Then oxygenated blood return back to the left side of the heart through pulmonary base. Now, what are, um, now volumes of blood present in the different part of the circulation. About 80% of entire blood volume is in the systemic circulation and 16% in the heart and lung. Of the 18% of the systemic circulation, approximately 64% in the vein 13% in the arteries, and 7% in the systemic arterioles and capillaries. And heart and lungs contains 9% of blood, is 7% of This figure shows the distribution of, this figure shows the distribution of blood percentage in the different part of the circulatory system. 84% in the systemic circulation. And among these, 64% in the veins, venules, and venous sinus, 13% in the arteries, 7% in the arterioles and capillaries. And in pulmonary circulation, 9% in heart, 7%. Now, the functional part of the vessel. What are the functional part of the vessel? Arteries, arterioles, capillaries, and then veins. Now the functional classification of the blood vessel. At first, Winkessel vessel, the example is elastic artery, then distributing vessel, the example is muscular artery, the resistant vessel, such as arterioles, exchange vessel, that is capillaries, and capacitant vessels is veins. This figure shows the feature of blood vessel. This is the large artery. 
in large artery there is a elastic fiber and a smooth muscle fiber in artery there is no elastic fiber but uh, have enough uh, a strong muscular layer that is smooth muscle layer in large vein there is also smooth muscle and elastic fiber and uh, there is a venous bar now arteries arteries transport blood under high pressure to the tissues for this reason arteries have strong vascular wall and blood flows at a high velocity in the arteries an elastic artery known uh, it is a windcastle vessel the example is aorta aortic artery iliac artery axillary artery and muscular artery serve as a distributing channel to the organ so it is uh, <clears throat> called distributing vessel now what is windcastle effect the compliance of them allowed to accommodate the stroke volume with only a moderate increase in pressure. The elastic recoil create pressure which maintain blood flow during diastolic phase of cardiac cycle. During systole, aorta the aorta distend way distend way stroke volume take say accommodate body during systole. Then during diastolic phase aorta maintain blood flow maintain korar jonno she abar recoil kore pressure create kore jeta push kore blood ke to the periphery etai hocche windcastle effect now arterioles as we know that the arterioles is the stem vessel the arterioles act as a control conduit through which blood is released into capillaries the arterioles have strong muscular well, which can close the arteriole completely or by relaxing dilate the blood vessel several fold thereby it controls its own blood flow according to the needs and why arterioles is called resistant vessel because arterioles have a smaller diameter it a smaller diameter er jonno less diameter er jonno etake amra resistant vessel bole thaki now microcirculation what is microcirculation microcirculation is the circulation of blood through a smaller blood vessel in the circulatory system it is say blood flow it is a circulation of the smallest blood vessel smallest blood vessel circulation in the circulatory system it can a blood flow away from flow of blood from metaarterial through capillaries into the post capillary venules this figure shows uh, components of uh, microcirculation what are the components of microcirculation at first metaarterial pre capillary sphincter then capillary then post capillary venule this figure shows the component of microcirculation here we see arterioles um, in arterioles there are uh, continuous muscular coat but in case of meta arteriole there are uh, no continuous muscular coat it is a smaller division of the arteriole here muscular fiber encircle the vessel at a intermittent point then pre capillary sphincter the capillary uh, opening of the capillaries are guarded by this muscular precapillary sphincter which regulate blood flow through capillaries this is a uh, capillaries and this is post capillary venules this slide i have already discussed then capillaries it is also known as exchange vessel because it exchanges fluid nutrients electrolytes hormones and other substances between blood and interstitial fluid the capillary wall are thin have numerous minute capillary pores that are permeable to water and other small molecular substance now veins this is 
capacitance vessel. In this figure, uh, here we can uh, see that the, this is the bulb uh, which prevents black backflow of venous blood. Compliance of veins, the compound of vein are two arteries. <clears throat> um, thereby, it serves as a controllable reservoir for the extra blood. It uh, maintains uh, blood flow um, either by contraction or relaxation, depending on the needs of the circulation. It also equipped with valve that prevent backflow of venous blood. Now. Topic, that is interrelationship of pressure, flow, and resistance. This pressure, what is pressure, what is flow, and what is resistance. Now the pressure. Pressure is the force per unit area, usually expressed in terms of height of column of fluid that the pressure will support. The common unit of pressure is a millimeter of mercury. One millimeter of mercury is equal to 1.36 centimeter of water, or 1330 dynes per centimeter square. Now, pressure gradient. Difference in the total energy or pressure between two parts. So what is flow? Flow is the quantity of blood that passes a given point in the circulation in a given period of time. The unit is ml per second or liter per minute. <clears throat> this figure shows interrelationship between pressure resistance and blood flow. P1 denotes the pressure at the origin of the vessel, and P2 denotes the pressure at the other end of the vessel. It is the pressure gradient, that is the difference between two ends of the vessel. Now, blood flow. Blood flow is two types, that is laminar flow and turbulent flow. The laminar flow, <coughs> also known as streamlined flow, when fluid flows in a parallel layer with no disruption between the layers, it is called laminar flow. It flows in streamline with each layer remaining same distance from the center of the from the vessel wall. Does they do not produce any sound. But when the velocity of blood flow increases above a critical level, the flow becomes dark. This figure shows the effect of constriction on the profile of velocities in a blood vessel. This is laminar flow. The constriction in the blood flow becomes finite, present, then high. Velocity becomes high. High velocity, then. The blood flow becomes turbulent, and after some time, it turns into laminar flow. The turbulent blood flow becomes too great when it passes by an obstruction in a vessel, when it makes a sharp turn, when it passes over a rough surface. Now, what is resistance? Resistance is the impediment to blood flow in a vessel. CGS unit, that is centimeter gram second. Unit is used to express resistance. What is peripheral resistance unit? If the pressure, this resistance uh, is not measured by direct means. So if the pressure difference between two points is one millimeter mercury and flow is one ml per second, the resistance is said to be one peripheral resistance unit. Now, the blood flow through a vessel is determined by two factors. That is pressure gradient, that is the pressure difference between two ends of the vessel. Another is resistance. The flow through a vessel can be calculated by this following formula. This is called Ohm's law. This law states that Q equal to 
pressure gradient by resistance. Here Q is equal to flow, R is equal to resistance, and this is pressure gradient. Now I am <clears throat> going to discuss the third topic that is <clears throat> how uh, fluid and other dissolved substances are exchanged between blood and interstitial fluid. The substances are exchanged or transferred between blood and interstitial fluid by diffusion. Water soluble, <clears throat> lipid soluble substances diffuse directly through capillary membrane, but the water soluble and non lipid solu soluble substances are diffused through capillary pores. <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is the blood capillary, this is interstitial space. This is the lymphatic system, lymphatic capital. <clears throat> Four primary forces determine whether fluid will move out of the blood in the interstitial fluid or in opposite direction. These forces are called Starling forces. In honor of physiologist Ernest Starling, who discovered first their importance. This is capillary pressure or capillary hydrostatic pressure, which tends to fluid outward through capillary membrane. This is interstitial fluid pressure when it is uh, it tends to force uh, fluid inward, but when it is negative, it forces fluid. <coughs> Yeah, uh, negative is flow force fluid inward. Then plasma colloid osmotic pressure it tends to force fluid force fluid inward. The interstitial fluid pressure it uh, force fluid outward when it is negative. Then plasma colloid osmotic pressure, it uh, force fluid inward by osmosis through capillary membrane. Then interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure, which force fluid outward through capillary membrane by osmosis. And the sum of these forces, um, that is net filtration pressure is positive. It tends to force fluid, it, um, causes more filtration of fluid in the interstitial space. When it is negative, it tends to force fluid inward by the absorption. Now, starting equilibrium for capillary exchange. Under normal condition in state of near equilibrium exists in most capillaries. The slight disequilibrium which uh, return to the circulation by lymphatics. Here we can see that the mean forces that tending to move fluid outward. At first mean capillary pressure that is uh, 3 millimeter mercury negative interstitial fluid fluid free fluid, fluid pressure that is three millimeter of mercury interstitial fluid colored osmotic pressure that is eight the total outward force is 18.3 and mean force that tending to more fluid inward this is uh, that is the plasma colored osmotic pressure with um, that is uh, 28 millimeter of mercury now net outward force is 0.3 of fluid uh, millimeter of mercury, which causes more filter outward than reabsorption. Return back to the now. What are the forces causing filtration at the artery end of the capillary? Forces tending to move fluid outward. That is capillary pressure at the artery end of the capillary is 30 millimeter of mercury, negative interstitial free fluid, free fluid pressure, that is three millimeter of mercury, 
interstitial fluid colloid of sodium pressure that is 8 millimeter mercury in total 41 millimeter mercury outward force now force is tending to move fluid inward that is plasma colloid of sodium pressure that is 28 millimeter mercury so net outward force is 13 millimeter mercury which tends to move fluid outward through capillary membrane now forces causing reabsorption at the venous end of the capillary the forces tending to move fluid inward that is plasma colloid of sodium pressure is 20 8 millimeter mercury forces tending to move fluid outward that is capillary pressure at the venous end is 10 millimeter mercury negative interstitial free fluid pressure is 3 millimeter mercury interstitial fluid colloid of sodium pressure is 8 millimeter mercury so total outward force is 2 into 1 and net inward force is 7 millimeter mercury which causes which tends to force fluid inward by reabsorption. This less reabsorption pressure is required to force fluid inward. Now I am going to discuss the last topics of this lecture. Control of tissue blood flow. The acute control of local blood flow. Two basic theories for local blood flow. The one is the theory, and another is oxygen leg theory. And two additional special examples of metabolic control of local blood flow are reactive hyperemia and active hyperemia. Now the vasodilator theory. The vasodilators are adenosine, carbon dioxide, adenosine phosphate compound, histamine, potassium, and hydrogen. Ion. When the rate of metabolism becomes great or greater, then it causes release of vasodilator. Then increased concentration of vasodilator, which causes vasodilation of the vasodilatation of the arterioles tissue blood flow. Then returning the tissue concentration of metabolites towards normal. Now oxygen leg theory. When there is an absence of adequate oxygen, blood vessels simply relaxed and natural dilatation of the blood vessel. Now, autoregulation of the blood flow. Intrinsic ability of an organ or tissue to regulate its own blood flow that is independent of its nervous and hormonal regulation. Autoregulation theory is two types metabolic theory and myogenic theory. Now, humoral control of the blood flow, tissue blood flow. These are some vasoconstrictor agent. These are some vasoconstrictor agent. These are some vasodilator agents. And um, vascular control by ions and other chemical factors. Calcium, increase in calcium concentration causes vasoconstriction. Increase in potassium ion concentration causes vasodilatation, and increase in magnesium ion concentration causes powerful vasodilatation. Increase in hydrogen ion concentration causes dilatation of the arteriole. Acetate and citrate causes mild degree of vasodilatation, and increase in carbon dioxide concentration causes moderate vasodilatation.
So thank you for patient listening.